Welcome to the warm-up, I'm Stu Wakeford. The regular season is done and it's all about the playoffs now. I tell you what, I'm not sure I've missed this feeling. You think we'd be used to it by now? Tenth playoff campaign, but don't worry, getting me through it and hopefully getting you through it as well. My best mates, Brentford women's gaffer Carly Osborne and the ambassador Marcus Gell. I mixed it up with the other way around this week, I didn't I? That. I know, I got the best friend shout as well, so I'm buzzing. You're in yeah, there, you're really, in, I'm finally there. For you. How are you both? <laughs> all good, Stu, all very good. Very well, very well, thank feeling, you. Feeling uh, refreshed and rejuvenated after your week off? Feeling very refreshed, very rejuvenated and very relaxed. So it's Sobered good. up? Yeah, of course. Yeah, the, you know, <laughs> do you remember the videos you were sending me? Not weird ones, not weird ones. <laughs> Just about, yeah. yeah. Um, how are you boys feeling about the playoffs? Positive, yeah. very positive. Confident, positive, but we know there's hard work to be done. Exactly, it's going to be it's going to be a battle. We're used to it. We know what to expect. And the big thing for me though, just under four and a half thousand people here. How I'm getting goosebumps <laughs> thinking about it. Who's going to be sat in eight eight nine? How excited are you for that? No, we're buzzing for the fans that can yeah. come in and experience a match day at the new stadium. Um, got a great side as they all know, but just to be in here for the first time with those sort of numbers is going to be unbelievable. Exactly, we can't wait to have you here, but we need your help. Just before kickoff, we've been playing a Hey Jude photo wall, and we want you to send us your favourite Brentford pictures. We'll then put them on the wall when we play Hey Jude just before kickoff, and your photos will be up on the screen in the stadium. We'll also be videoing that, so we'll put it out after on socials. And we've got the email address down below, and we'll also put it in the comments section. It is video at brentfordfc.com. Carly. We need something else from the fans, don't we? We had a whiffle with this last week. What do we need them to do? Like, subscribe, and of course, make sure you tap the little notification button so you can keep up to date. That's how you do it, Ambassador. He's the expert on that that's one. True, that's true, that's my bit. It. He that's, talks that's the real football bit. sense, I just do that. <laughs> he does that bit so well. Well, the big games, they need the big names. And we've got a cracker for you today. We have got an international sports star joining us today to talk about elite athlete mindset in high pressure games because you two have been there as well but i want to get what it's like for other sports what it's like and the big names they don't stop there Vitaly Janot for me he's got to be the bargain of the season i sat down with him this week to chat about i think he's one of the naughty boys coming on the pitch with Ivan and that he's in the naughty group isn't he <laughs> definitely he was great about that i asked him as well which is his favorite goal is it qpr or is it Stoke? Or maybe it was Borough? Plus, two years I've been waiting to sit down with this man and I finally got the chance to have a chat with Pontus Janssen and I tell you what, it was well worth the wait. Here's a little tease. What are you like on a match day? Do you get nervous? Because you don't strike me as someone that would. Um, I get nervous if I, uh, if I don't have my... Uh, I'm very superstitious. No if you, way. Yeah, I said ask, before, I didn't think you would be. <laughs> I'm very, very stupid. If you ask the other players in the team, there, Henrik, he says, Henrik spent 30 to 35 minutes before a game just sitting and staring at me <laughs> because I do <laughs> so many weird things. Lads, I absolutely love him. He's just one of us, isn't he? He's just a proper football fan. Do not miss that later in the show. It is an absolute cracker. Right, boys, end of the season last week. We've got to talk about it. Um, it was a continuation of that form we've seen towards the end of this season, isn't it, Marcus? Yeah, it's a good, strong performance. You know, um, dominated possession, as we, we know we, we're going to do anyway. Um, Ivan getting his 30, what was it, 31st? Yeah. Brilliant moment for him and the team. Um, and yeah, we, we, was, we was comfortable. The only downside was conceding the goal with all the form that we've been in front of, you know, in terms of keeping clean sheets. Dormio didn't get their clean oh, sheets, nah. <laughs> <laughs> did they? They how happy were you for Ivan to bag that 31st? Yeah, well, myself and Mark Burridge, we screamed to the top of our voice <laughs> up in that press box through excitement and um, just a, a great moment for him and, and the squad out there. Um, and he fully, he fully deserved it as well. It was tough going because he was on the yellow card and it was like, can he stay safe and, and complete the minutes and try and get a goal? Uh, Thomas said he, he had an hour to do it, he said. <laughs> And I was he was constantly looking. Would you have, I mean, you wouldn't have been on the record anyway. No, I was going to say, <laughs> But would yeah. you have been checking the clock all the time? Yeah, I, I think naturally you do that. You know, it's, it's such a big thing to break that record and being so close to it, he, he wants to achieve it. He's had an unbelievable season um, and he deserves all the plaudits. But what I loved about it was I listened to an interview after and he was giving kind of so much credit to the rest of his team for him being able to do that. And that just goes to show the influence he has on the squad and how he understands that it's not just about his goals, it's about everything that the team do mm. together and that's why he's achieved it. But I was talking to Vitaly about this and we, we spoke about here 
the Watford game when they all ran on the pitch, the naughty boys. <laughs> <laughs> but it just shows that togetherness, doesn't it, lads? That like they were all so happy for them. And I don't know if you guys have noticed this, but when we score, the whole team celebrates mm. together every time. It's never ones and twos, it's the whole squad. How important will that be heading into a playoff campaign? It's going to help. It's, it's great body language to show as well, is that everyone is together on this. Um, and as I said, the goal, when the goals go in, it's a joyous moment for the team out there because it's things that they've worked on all week and to put the ball into the back of the net is the best thing of the week. So, please for everyone. And talking about the team, that Brian goal. Talk yeah. about a team goal, right? Seriously, low-key, that might be my favourite goal of the season. I, I, I thought I had it nailed before. That, that has got to be... I think what it reminded me of. Uh, what was it? Arsenal game. Arsenal goal against Norwich. All that yeah. quick one touch. Yeah. Yeah. How good was that? But that came with Ivan off the pitch, didn't it? it? In a strange way, the team kind of relaxed when Ivan went off. It was like all the pressure had gone off. The 31st goal was being scored. And everyone was just like at playtime, yeah. just doing what you want, enjoying in it. I guess it's also circumstance, wouldn't it? It was the last, what, half an hour yeah. of the end of the season before you're going into a high pressure environment. And it was shackles are off here now. Yeah. And let's just have a little bit of fun, right? Yeah, it was. It was just the freedom was there and, and that goal shows it. It was a fantastic um, goal and a fantastic team goal. And like I said, the, the performance on a whole was the performance you want before going into the playoffs, mm. isn't it? It's filled with confidence filled with freedom and expression of how players want to play and how Brentford play and it was beautiful to see. And Brian obviously scoring that goal, he's firing now going into the playoffs. How big is that having Brian in that form, Marcus and Ivan as well as your three options if we do stick with those two roles? It's very important and it's pleasing that they, they, they are getting their numbers up now. You know Brian's got what eight, eight league yeah. goals and, and ten assists so he's still flying, he can still add to it um, and it is important because you want players that can turn up with the goals if your main goal scorer is not, not firing but it's, it's a great option to have when you've got two or three other players that can fire the goals in. How big will this run of results that we're, we're heading into the playoffs be for us going into these games? Yeah, it'll be good, confidence should be high, um, the form's there, what you want, the, the belief is there so it's massive and now like I said going into, into the playoffs you know, players are feeling confident and that's what you want, that is what you need. Um, and it's going to, I think for me, you know, we need to go in with confidence, shoulders back, head held high and full belief in we're going to go and achieve it. Well, the man that will be leading us into those playoffs is the skipper, Pontus Janssen. I sat down with him in the week and I tell you what, I've not stopped smiling since. Pontus, it's taken me two years, but I finally <laughs> got you in the seat. Um, thanks for your time, mate. Yeah, no problem. Um, so we've just finished the regular season, we're headed into the playoffs, uh, a time where I imagine it's as much about the mental side of the game as it is on the pitch. And we're a side that's got a lot of leaders, Christian, Ivan, Henrik, Winston, and of course, yourself. What will your roles be in the next few weeks? Um, I think this is the third time in a row for me now to go into this playoff and uh, in one way of me enjoys it but it's also one way of me that, that don't enjoy it but uh, I think this year compared to the other two has been a little bit different because we we didn't lose it on the last day so last year losing it at the last yeah two last games against Stoke and, and Barnsley going in with that atmosphere and that feeling into the to the playoff games was a bit hard and same with Leeds the, the year before we also lost it we were top two almost the whole season we lost it in the last two, three games. And then you go into playoff with a little bit of like different atmosphere, like of, oh, this is hard, how, how good are we, you know, the question marks. So, so my speak before the last game against Bristol and even Watford was like, okay, now at the moment we have an atmosphere in the club, like we, we can't lose games. Of course we can, but that's the atmosphere we have, we can't, we are so, so hard to beat. But it's enough to lose one game. So I said against Bristol, it's enough if we lose today, 100% be it, like we're going into the next game, like, oh, where are we now? We lost the last game, you know, that type of feeling. But now it feels like we're just flying, we want to go out and play now, you know, that yeah. feeling to have that, it's, it's so nice. I think this is a little bit different this uh, year going into playoff compared to, to, to last year. I mean, listen to you there, mate, is why everyone says what an amazing leader you are. What do you think makes a good leader? I think I've uh, grown into it, to be honest. Yeah. Um, of course, it's uh, when I had my first talks with, with Thomas before joining Brentford, it was not like he said to me, you, you're going to be the captain, but in one way I understand it, like he, 
I come to a young squad, a squad that's been very, very good, but have one good game and then a bad game. And I said to Thomas, for me, on the good day, Brentford is one of the best teams in the league. And I've been in the league for, yeah, when I talked to him, three years. So what can we do to, uh, to have a higher consistency and always, always play? Not you, of course, you have had bad, bad days, but try to always have a good game and, and don't get out of the rhythm. And I think that has been our strength the last two years. We, like I said, we are very hard to beat. We don't lose many games and, and we're a tough team to play against. Yeah. And we're not tough in a way of like kicking the ball away and defending with a lot of men. We, just, we almost dominate every game, but still don't concede chances, still don't concede goals. So I think the way we play is, is very demanding, but it's, when we do it good, I think we're very, very hard to beat. And, and you spoke of that. When you joined, you spoke to Thomas on the phone for an hour and a half, I remember you mm. saying. Do you have similar outlooks on football then? Or does it almost yeah. work sometimes when you don't? I you... mean, we're both Scandinavians and he's Danish and I'm, I'm Swedish. We're both coming from big clubs in Scandinavia. So we're very similar of how we look at things. But of course, I came from, from being with BL side Lee is a little bit different. And I was a bit brainwashed working with him in a good way, of course, because yeah. I really enjoyed it. But yeah, I just felt on Thomas directly that we were very similar to each other. And then I met Rasmus and same there. He's Scandinavian also, worked in a big club in Scandinavia. And, and same there, I, was, I just said the same things to Rasmus. Like, I, my mentality has always been like, don't look for like being in top six. Always look for being like top two instead. Because if you don't reach top two, then there's a big chance of you to then reach top six, which has been now the last two seasons. Of course, I don't like to be, be third in the table. It would much be nice to be top two. But if you look for top two all the time, there's a big chance of them being in top six. Yeah. Uh, and now we're going into playoff again. Like I said, we're third team probably to serve a little bit more and then should be top two, but now we aren't, so now we just have to go out and, and, and enjoy the playoff in one way or another. So were these things that when you joined, you, you were like, right, I'm going to implement this around the place? Because you said about being a captain, you, you became the leader instantly here. Mm. What were the things that you changed around the place? Because one thing I noticed is we sprint up from the back line. So straight away, that was something that we weren't mm. doing so much, but we're sprinting straight mm. up and then yeah, I mean, that, that came from, from my first meeting with, uh, with Brian, assistant coach. So me and Brian, I'm not saying that I'm assistant coach, but almost in a way as I'm so close with him. We're working so much to get on the defensive, defensive pitches and imagines to, to, to get that good. And now it's two years into it, of course, now it, it's there, you know. So now we just, of course, have to like look at small details and, and correct it. But like you said, the, the defensive records we have those, these two last years compared to, and I want to talk about the previous Brentford, uh, years but it's it's much much better much much better we defend much better but like i said we don't defend in a in a way of like some other teams in this league like they're backing off with 10 men into their own half and defend of course then there's a big chance of like having clean sheet and considering a few chances but like you just said we, we we defend almost on the half on the line of the of the half of the pitch and often like me and ethan we have half of the pitch covering it behind us just me and him covering the whole space you know it's, it's a very demanding way of, of defending but when you do it well it, it, it's it's good yeah I mean, listen to you there talk about how it's been to Brian and, and stuff, and you said that you kind of grown into this leadership role. But you were you were a leader at your other clubs, right? So were you a leader when you were younger in like your school teams? Were you always captain of your football team growing up and the other sports teams? Yeah, for a little bit. I mean, I remember I was captain for the national team when I was younger, and a little bit in, in Malmo as well. I was second 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 uh, captain for for Malmo when we won the gold. And but you must have been young then. Yeah, I was. 1920 something so yeah it's always been quite natural for me and I think how I am how I talk how I act on the pitch it, it comes quite natural but I always said also I don't need armband to be a leader of course if I have it it's an honor and I, I really like like it and now it's it's so natural for me. like I feel like even taking a picture with a match on if I look at my arm and I don't see the, the armband I feel like hey something is wrong here so <laughs> that's something I love, like to have on my arm because that makes me take responsibility for the team um, but I just think I'm, I'm going into it. Like I said, Thomas didn't promise me to come here to be captain. Yeah. Um, but uh, it, it came natural. Romain uh, went to, to West Bromwich and I was, yeah, of course, Henrik was assistant. But yeah, he asked me and I, I actually went to Henrik and asked him if it was okay for him because I didn't want to have any, any bad relationship with Henrik. But he, he, Henrik actually been fantastic assistant captain and supported me all the way since, since day one. Um, yeah. But it was also easy for me to come in there because I came from a very good season at Leeds more or less all of the players knew me and you know then it's easy to come into a group like they listen to what I said and, and I always said like you have to um, act first and then you can, can, can get the, re the rest with you. Yeah. So of course if I just talk, talk, talk and then don't act on the pitch it would probably be tougher for me to get them with me. Yeah. But I just think like uh, yeah it has been, it has been two, two good years. And obviously in that role comes 
pressure. Do you feel pressure being a leader? Yeah, yeah for sure. How that's, do you deal with uh, that though? Yeah, that's probably the hardest. hardest. In one way, it's nice that you play in championship because there's 46 games. It feels like you play one game, the final whistle goes. The first thing you do, you go in and prepare for the next one. So you're almost no time to like feel pressure or like feeling anything. You just have to be prepared for games. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the last, to be honest, the last one and a half year with this pandemic on top of it has been very demanding for everyone. Yeah. Um, in but one way, it has been nice that we played so many games and like been together and like things like that. But it's also been things that maybe people from Austria don't think about. Like, I haven't seen my parents for 11 months. I haven't lived this country for 10 months. Yes, I know other people always ha also has, has it hard during this time, but like for me, that's that's, that's hard, you know, to, yeah. to don't see your parents, to don't hug your parents, and like, don't, for my parents, to don't see my daughter, my, my wife, and things like that. It's, it has been hard, but the good results has make it easier, if, if yeah. that makes sense. Well, you're humans at the end of the day. Yeah, exactly. And obviously, when people are struggling around the club and stuff, a lot of them will turn to you, because mm. you are this figure. So who, do, who does Pontus go to when, when you kind of need someone? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I'm quite introvert, is that what you say? Like yeah. when I keep things uh, inside myself. Uh, I have, or the club have some people that we can talk to, which I use a lot um, to, to just, like they're listening to me and I can just, just get everything out. Yeah. And that's actually quite nice. I'm, I'm used to that from when I was young. I always been, like I said, talk, having everything inside myself and then acting in anger, if that makes sense. And, uh, it's actually nice to talk about things like yeah, yeah. Um, so so the club has been actually been really good with that um, and do you try and get away from it sometimes and just switch off and what do you do to get away from football because especially this year like you said it's just quick turnarounds yeah. you can't go and see your family no. how do you get away from it because everyone needs that or you're going to break mm. surely yeah it's, it's, it's a good question because there's been so many games and on top of that i was injured for for two months went through a surgery and it was also like, I was luckily that my team won games because then it became a bit easier. I could go to the games and support them, but it was also hard because I wanted to be there. And then when we lost three games, that was at the end of my, my rehab, so I was close and it felt like, come on, I really need to get back as quick as possible because I don't want this season to like run away from us. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I think for everyone, there's been a hard season, yeah. um, a long season. But of course, everything now is worth it because where we are where we are. So. Uh, the other thing you've not been able to do, is something that I know you love doing, is going and watch Malmo play. Because <laughs> you're a proper football fan, right? Oh. So you must be missing getting to go and watch them in the stadium and doing what we've been missing as well mm. as fans. Mm. Yeah, I know. I just told you here before we turned on the cameras that when, when I came out, I think it was Blackburn, was that the first game when we had fans? And when I saw the people like smiling and the sound of the applause, I swear, I was so close to cry. And that was only 2,000 in, in the stadium. Um, so for me, I, I, I fall in love to football through the fans. I'm like you said, I'm, I'm a proper fan, and that's the reason why I love football. For me, I, I understand why we play those games, being empty same because it's our job, and like we have to do it. But it's for me, it's not proper football. So I'm, I'm so happy that we can have fans back for for the semi-finals. Yeah. See, I think that's what makes you who you are and so special on the pitch because you're one of us mm. on the pitch. You get why we go and you get why we love it and stuff. I want to talk to you about the match, Dave. What are you like on a match day? Do you get nervous? Because you don't strike me as someone that would. Um, I get nervous if I uh, if I don't have my. Uh, I'm very superstitious. No if way! You, uh, I if you ask, before, uh, I didn't think you would be. <laughs> I'm very very superstitious. If you look, ask the other players in the team, there, Henrik, he says Henrik spent 30 to 35 minutes before games just sitting and staring at me <laughs> because I do so <laughs> many weird things. Uh, and for me, that's one way. If I don't do that, I feel like I'm not prepared. Right. To, be, to be totally honest, I'm very thankful that I met yeah, Christian, Henrik, because they have made me realize to, to take it a little bit more like calm and don't be so serious. It's just a game. It's a football game, 90 minutes. If you play, accept it and, like you said, prepare for the next one. So I'm a little bit more calm with, and I think it's also because I'm now a father and, you know, things, I'm older and, and I'm a captain, so probably things come no, no, natural. But to, to, to be a little bit more calm and, and have a little bit more coolness about like, like it's just a, a football game. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so to be honest, I can, I can also be nervous. Would you just be like zoned out then in the change room? Like, yeah. really? And are you, are you preempting what's going to happen? A little bit. Uh, it's more like I just, I just have to do the same things, the same rituals. Because if I do that, I know it has been working well for the last five, six, seven years. And if I do, it is a big chance of me Knowing that, okay, I go out on the pitch, I've done all my like superstitious things, I know I'm ready for it. So it's more like that. Um, right. So sometimes it can also be very bad because if I don't like go out to the game and I forget, oh, f 
oh sorry, I forgot so, to do something. I can start to get like nervous. I need to like to, to call some of the, the physios or someone to like to, to quickly correct that. So right. it can also be a little bit uh, hard if I don't do the right things. But uh, do you mind me asking what some of them are? Uh, ah, but it's it's so many things. Like I have creams I have to use, some things I have to eat, and I have to be like if a banana, I have to eat like the exact amount of the banana. So it's so many weird things. Wow. Um, to, to, to go out last on the dress, you, you know those yeah. things that not, normally other people also have. Yeah. Um, but like I said, it's, it's, it's more calm now than it was when yeah. I was younger. Well, you go out last and you're also the last person that speaks to the lads before kickoff. Mm. What, what kind of stuff do you say? You, you mentioned it before, Bristol City and, and Watford. Yeah, I, I think that has, to be totally honest, that has been quite hard the last, the last two years to find because it feels like the two last seasons have been exactly the same. So for me to find the right words before a game has been a little bit hard. I think I've done it quite well the last couple of games. And I think especially I nailed it now, the last one, to like have focus on, on where we are now, stay here and on, focus on the next action and, and things like that. And, and I just know that in football, it can change so quick. One, one loss and all this we built up for 10, 15 games, it can just change. Like we had this season where with 25 games without a loss. Then we lost one and then we lost two directly after that. So, you know, it's hard sometimes in football. So you need to stay here and now. I think that's also why it's good that we lost and been there last season. We know what we are going to face now in the coming yeah. two weeks. Do you write it before you go out or no. it, just it just comes to you? It comes to me. I, I prepare a little bit, of course. I'm, uh, but, you know, I've, I've never known. I don't, yeah, exactly. Well, mate, it's been amazing to chat to you. I've got one gripe. Any danger you get a goal? Huh? <laughs> when is that goal coming? Yeah, I've said since, since I joined that I've, I've, I'm saving it for, for the right day. Yeah. And the expected goals I have, it should be, I, I should score one or two goals this season, <laughs> to be totally honest. Uh, and um, I mean, I, I did a surgery, like, so I had a problem with my ankle. It's not an excuse this, but I've had a problem with my ankle for the last two years. When you have a problem with the ankle, I'm a tall person. I struggle to jump, to be totally honest. I'll let you off, top man. Thanks for your time, man. Thank you. What a man. We'll get on to him and the pressure of these fixtures we've got coming up. But we've been joined by a bona fide England cricket legend. That's right, over there is Monty Panesar. How are you, mate? Oh, I'm really good, mate. And um, I'm absolutely buzzing like a bee. <laughs> you're buzzing <laughs> like a bee. That is a strong start from Monty. Now, I know what you're thinking. How have we bagged Monty Panesar? Well, I'll tell you what. You're going to make a career change now you finish your cricket, haven't you? And you've joined us as part of the content team. Yeah, yeah. So I, I was studying, um, you know, masters uh, in sports journalism at St Mary's Uni, and this opportunity came up, and I thought it'd be a really good chance, you know, to develop into a sports reporter. It's yeah. easy to talk about cricket, but you know, for me to report on football, I'm really looking forward to this opportunity. Well, what a perfect way to introduce you, mate, because. As an elite sportsman, you've been there, you've done that, you've played in the high pressure games like these two have. I haven't, so I'm going to talk to you boys about that. You've batted out the ashes at Cardiff. Did you feel the pressure of those occasions? I, I think in Cardiff in particular, where the expectation was for me to, you know, with our Monty, you know, you can't really bat, so we'll get out at some point and Australia win. But that's what sport is about, isn't it? it, it it's like, you know, the completely un unexpected, you know, can happen. Miracles can happen, and that was a miracle on that day. Me and Jimmy Anderson, we both, both, you know, drew the Test match and batted out the overs, and um, probably my finest hour in an England shirt. And, and Carly, you, you played at Wembley in the JPT final. What, what was that like? Did, again, did you feel the pressure of the occasion? Because it, it's similar to what these boys are going to be going through in the next couple of games and maybe three games. Yeah, I mean that was that was my first time at Wembley, so it was. I was I was young, um, and there, there was a pressure there. I remember, I still remember the feeling now when you walk out and you feel the flames when they come out. The heat is a joke, like it's it's actually crazy. And I remember thinking to myself, like I'm really here. You look around, you take it all in. Um, but those are those are moments that you prepared for your whole life as you know trying to become a footballer. And those are the moments that you live for. Um, it wasn't the greatest day for, for us as a team, unfortunately, but um, it, it was a, an occasion I'll never forget, an occasion that me, helped me grow as a person and player. What were, the, what were the semis like? Because obviously that's what the lads have got coming up now. Are you, is it weirdly the semi becomes more pressure because you, you're so desperate to get to that final, whereas like the final you can enjoy it? Do you see what I mean? Um, I, I, think I think they're both the same, really. Um, I think obviously the final was a bigger occasion. 
Um, so, you know, for the semis, you know, you're still at your, your normal ground, so to speak, and things like that. Um, but I think what helps as well, with the right changing room, everybody is able to help each other through the pressure and everyone can look to their left and right and know that the person that's coming out to battle with them is going to go all the way. And if you have that belief in the change room, that's ultimately what wins you trophies and titles and promotion. So when, when, when you're in these semi-finals and you've all played in these games that have been huge, are you thinking about the prize? Are you thinking about what's next? Do you see what I mean? When you've played in, in playoff semi-finals, Marcus, is it all about, look, that cliche, next game, next game? Well, I think it, most important is the game that you're playing in. Um, can you get past that stage after 90 minutes or whatever, whatever it is? Um, and then once you can achieve that, then you start thinking about the next bit. But it's so important that the players don't get caught too far ahead in their thoughts about a final. You've still got 180 minutes to We're go. We're not there yet, are we? Exactly. So you've got to earn that right to get there um, and, and manage yourself well enough through the, that, that period. Monty, in the big games, what were you like on a match day? I probably had a few superstitions myself. I, I, first thing I do, get to the dressing room, have a cup of tea, read the newspaper, and uh, and just sort of relax myself. You know, to, I, I would try to take the importance away. The bigger the occasion, the less important I'll think. I'll think I, you know, say it's club cricket out there. I know I'm playing at Lords, um, you know, against India, but you know, I take that importance out. Mm. So then I can relax. I trust my game, um, and uh, ready to ready, ready to fire. What were the, because uh, you play with some characters. I want to know who were the ones on a match day that were hyper and who were the ones that were chilled? Yeah, look, uh, there were some of the players, you know, would love to hit loads of balls. So Andrew Strauss would just hit lots of balls, you know, just before, you know, in the morning of a test match. Um, he would love to hit lots. Um, others would be really relaxed. I, I'll be the other way where I, you know, bowl a little bit and that was it. And, yeah. and I remember Freddie, when he was at his best, you know, when, you, when the bowlers warm up, he would bowl one ball, if it's hit the spot, he'd just walk off. And we all would say, yeah, he's a freak, isn't he? He's a freak of nature. But would that lift you guys? So say, like, if you could feel the confidence of your teammates, would that give you a lift in the change room, Carlo? Yeah, no, it does. I think it naturally does. You look around you and you know, kind of, everyone's ready. It naturally does. Um, and I think, it, I think it depends on the type of player you are as well. Mm. I think the players that were more leaders looked for those type of things because they recognise they might have to go and give someone you know, a little bit more of, of something to help fire them up. Um, but when you look around the change room, you know that everyone's ready. That's the greatest feeling. And we, we spoke a lot about team spirit. That, that's what will get the boys through these next two games, right, Marcus? Yeah, definitely will. Um, following on to what Carly said, you know, you feed off the energy. Sometimes you've got maybe too much energy in there yeah. and you might need one or two that's got that calming influence um, in the change room just to settle the nerves down because you can burn that sort of nervous energy in the change room and that can spread out to the team and that may you know, impact the start of the match. So you've got to manage those emotions very carefully. You played in semis at two ends of the, like age-wise, right? <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, saying, I'm trying to say this so politely. very nervous. Yeah, yeah, I know, bro. I know. I was like, how do I phrase this? But did, did it feel different? Um, you see what I mean? Each time? Yeah. Uh, the ones that I had at the start, you're full of excitement, you're kind of going into the unknown a bit and then towards the end of my career I had two semi-finals where you've got that sort of career of, of games behind you, that experience and as I said I'm probably more of a calming influence at that latter stage of my career and hopefully that can help the team you know progress. That's why you need the blend right? Yeah the you ages. need the blend. Well, we've certainly got a blend of youth and experience in this squad. We've already spoken to the skipper, Pontus Janssen, who's been there and done it. But for Vitaly Janot, this will be his first playoff campaign. I sat down with him in the week and here's a little teaser of an interview that will be going out over the weekend. Here we go! How about around the squad? You seem like you fitted in really well. Yeah, I live next here to the stadium, so when I come to the stadium, I think I walk five minutes. So I think it's 12 or 30 miles to the centre of London. I've been there four or five times, yeah. so it's really nice. Where do you like in London that you've been? Yeah, the London Eye. Yeah? Um, yeah, I like it. Good and views? Yeah, it's <laughs> nice, it's nice, and some good restaurants. And what about um, your teammates? Who are you closest to? Oh, that's a good question. Yeah, I think all teammates are very friendly and nice and yeah, we can see it on the pitch when someone score, I don't know, me or maybe Pone. So yeah, not 
when yeah, Ivan scored. Yeah, good, so. <laughs> yeah, well, I was going to get onto that. When Ivan scored, yeah, yeah, yeah. you and the naughty boys yeah, down there, yeah, yeah. around the pitch. <laughs> yeah, me, someone, Charles, Brian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, it was cool, it was cool. No, I think um, we have a good, we all have good teammates, so we can see it on the pitch when we play together. Yeah. And um, off the pitch, I think now we play a bit, a bit more table tennis on the training ground, so it's a bit funny. Charlie said that he's the best, him or Christian? Nah, no chance. No chance. Nah, this no, is a really big thing, isn't it, around the group? Yeah, we played today. I think I beat him 2 0 in set and 1 0 and 1 0. We played to 11. Well, you beat Charlie? So, yeah, three times. But he today. keeps saying he's the best. He's bad. We've got to get this film because bad. everyone thinks they're the best at table tennis. Yeah, I don't we'll know see. who to believe. I don't we, know who to believe. We'll see. We have a tournament now. Yeah. Um, I think I played the first game against David. I win this game and I think the other player are a little bit scared. I don't know why they don't play, but. Yeah. Yeah, I we'll guess see. that's that's great for at the moment when we're going into quite a, a pressured environment of the playoffs for you guys yeah. to take your mind off it, right? No, for me it's like I think we have much of fun, so we make many jokes. But I think when we are on the pitch, we have the focus on the training ground. So this training, next training, next training. But after training, we make many jokes or do two touch. We play two touch or table tennis. But when we're on the pitch, so we don't um, forget to focus on the next game or training session. What a man that will be on our YouTube channels over the weekend ahead of the Bournemouth game on Monday night. Lads, what a player, but also a seriously funny guy. And especially in the next week or so, I imagine there's going to be a lot of serious stuff and a lot of serious chat. Carly, how important will characters like Vitaly be in the smiles and, and, and the fun that they bring? Oh, it'd be huge because it keeps the group nice and settled. You know, it brings that fun element to the game, keeps people relaxed. So he's going to be, he's going to be key and he has been all season. But when he's on the pitch, Serious, isn't he? Yeah, he's a serious contender in there, isn't he? But you, you do need that balance off on the training pitch. You don't want people too uptight. You want people to relax, to perform. And that's what you want over these two games coming up. That's it. And those two games coming up start on Monday night, 6pm, Bournemouth away. That game is live on Sky Sports, but you can also watch it on iFollow. Match day passes for that at the usual place, brentfordfc.com forward slash iFollow. Lads, that's it for today. Monty, cheers for joining us. You enjoyed it? Yeah, absolutely loved it. And yeah. uh, I wish Brentford all the best for the playoffs. That's it, lads. How are we feeling about the playoffs? Oh, Excited? Positive, confident. We know it's, going to be, it's going to be great. The best part of it is going to have 4,000 fans here watching the match. That's Looking it. Looking forward to it. Looking forward to it. That's right. We cannot wait. This place, next Saturday, fans in together again. You heard it from Pontus. The impact we can have on this team is absolutely massive. We've not been able to be together much this season, but we're still as one. We are Brentford United as always, and we go one last push in the playoffs. We've been here before. That doesn't matter. We go again, heads held high. It's been a great season so far. It isn't over yet, though. Have a great weekend, and come on, you bees. You Reds!